Vikings snapped an 18 game losing streak with the win last Friday night. Go Vikings tonight. They hosted Fillmore Friday Football Focus reporter Taja Davis was at the game. She joins us live in studio with the action. That's right, guys. The Fillmore Flashes are hoping that it's their turn to break into the win column. Fillmore came into tonight's game winless in five contests so far. So this figured to be a competitive battle at Wainimi High School. Let's get to the action. With the starting handshake, Wainimi and Fillmore gear up to show what they're made of at the Vikings' homecoming game. Robert Baca III for the Vikings thought they had an easy touchdown, but no! George Tarango quickly intercepted the ball, letting the Vikings know they were up for the challenge. That interception sets up this play down the line. Tarango shining again as he takes it home and gets his team on the board first. Wainimi's possession and they start getting a little warmed up. Alexander Tilly easily makes his way to the end zone and gets the Vikings on the board up by one. Baca with a good eye and he sends the ball to junior running back Maniko up Hugh with a massive yard gain. The Vikings now seem to be stepping up to the plate. Receiving the kickoff, Tilly is rushed by three flashes. We think it's over, but Tilly twists his way through and was able to advance a good 10 yards. Wainimi is leading 14 to 6 at the start of the second quarter. Baca trying to send the ball to Johnny Olea, but it's intercepted by Fillmore's Ryan London at the one yard line. This is the second disruptive interception made by the Flashes. In Wainimi's possession again, Baca looking to rocket it into senior fullback Joey Madrigal. Madrigal beats through, shrugs a flash off of him. His teammates keeping his lane clear, breaks two tackles at the same time. And and takes it all the way home. So a big win for the Wainimi Vikings ending the game 6 to 42. Next week Wainimi is in Santa Maria to play the Saints. Fillmore is off next Friday. Reporting live in studio, I'm Taja Davis. Back to you guys. All right, Taja, great job and hey, great. For the Wainimi yeah, Vikings two in a row, right? <laughs> all right, Christian Agerbeet is thriving in Newbury Park after coming over from nearby Westlake. And Friday Football Focus reporter Kristen Kirby has more. Standing six foot five, Newbury Park senior Christian Egerbide's height makes him hard to miss on the football field. But it's his personality that makes him stand out even more. If you could bottle it, you could make a million dollars. I don't know what it is, but I mean, he's charismatic. He gets along with uh, teammates. He gets along with students on campus that aren't football players. He gets along with girls. He gets along with adults and young kids. He just fits in. Fitting in at a new school and on a new team after transferring from Westlake High School after his sophomore year was a seamless transition thanks to head coach Fabricus and his staff. When I first got here I wasn't sure if they were going to be like really cracked down on like me being kind of myself and being able to show my personality but they've just been totally embracing of uh, me and they call me all kinds of nicknames and stuff. In Christian's first year with the team, the Panthers earned a spot in the Northern Division CIF Southern Section Championship, a feat they hadn't accomplished since 1995. While they came up just short to Paso Robles, their special season was the result of the players' bond off the field. After our pregame meals on Thursday, the night before the game, we would all get together at uh, our friend David Folds' house, one of the guys on the team, and it would be like eight of us just getting together and playing a little Texas Hold'em, and it ended up growing to like an every week thing. That senior group embraced the younger, the juniors and the sophomores, and he was one of those that blended right in and became part of their card club, part of their let's go to the movies group, and so it was just a neat fit, and he was a big part of that. While Christian is only one of a few returning starters for the Panthers, he's up to the challenge of leading a young group back to the CIF finals. His work ethic he says, comes in large part thanks to his family's athletic genes. My grandfather was like a world champion highlight player at the age of like 20 or really young. So that's what he did as his profession and he traveled the world playing highlight. He was a professional at what he did, so he knows like the hard work it takes to, you know, really be your best at something. So just from the standpoint of teaching me um, how to work hard, and you know have discipline and have a good work ethic he's been pretty influential 
The honor student hopes to continue playing football in college and has had conversations with Pac-12 and Ivy League schools. For Friday Football Focus, I'm Kristen Kirby reporting from the Cronkite Sports Bureau in Los Angeles. All right, thank you, Kristen. Now, Newberry Park has is 5-1 and one this year after beating Simi Valley tonight 56-21. to 21. All right, here's a couple more scores you won't see on the ticker. Santa Paula losing the Vasquez from Acton. While well, Grace Brethren of Simi Valley now 6-0, oh, they travel to Boron and beat the Bobcats 49-zip.